This is the Six Man Show, an Orlando Magic podcast, with your hosts, Luke Silvia and Jonathan Osborne, covering all things Magic basketball. By fans, for fans. Go Magic! What's going on, Orlando Magic fans? You guys are back with the Six Man Show. Today is September 7th, 2023. Jonathan Osborne here, as always, joined by my co-host, Luke Sylvia. Luke, what is up? You know, I talked about it last week. You always got something you're looking ahead to. Tonight, as you guys are listening to this, the NFL's back, baby. Mm. Football on our screen. You want college? We got it. You want NFL? We got it. Less than a month away, Orlando Magic Media Day? We got it. It's all happening. It's all coming together, and I love when a plan comes together. I'm very excited. Um, obviously, you know we, we uh, were recording our last episode while producer Kevin was just like in complete shambles, LSU versus FSU, and you know, and much to your chagrin, you know the the Knowles were able to pull it out over those Tigers, and what, they moved up a bit in the rankings now. Like the AP poll, was it like four or something like that? LSU now. It's like five, I think. I could be completely wrong. I don't. I try not to pay attention to too much that dirty. Tar Heels nasty moved city. up to uh, fourth, seventeen. Fourth. Yeah. Yeah. FSU's yeah. four. So, whatever. Clemson. They drop a huge one to Duke, and uh, Duke sneaks their way into the top twenty-five. I don't know the last time Duke was ranked. I don't know if it was recent. I would be willing to guess it might not have been, but uh, just uh, incredible, incredible. College football is so back. Yeah, and then uh, what is it tonight? Lions and, and Chiefs, which yeah. a lot of people I'm talking to are really high on the Lions. And I'm like, I don't, I know they had a strong finish to the season last year. And, but Jared Goff's their quarterback. Like, I just don't, I can't ever feel good, that good about a team that is quarterbacked by Jared Goff. Yeah, I, it's funny because you used to have a little bit, like, people used to have some more confidence in Jared Goff, I think, especially when we thought that he was going to be like, the next big thing when it came to quarterbacks in the league. When he and was now, traded for like four first round picks so the Rams could take yeah. him. Yeah, exactly. Whatever so, it was. Travis Kelsey hyper extended that uh a knee or whatever. Whatever you hike hyper extend, I don't know. Mm-hmm. But I know that whatever they usually out like four to six weeks. So I missed my fantasy draft this year and my whole team got auto picked. I got Cooper Cup who's out, Travis Kelsey who's probably out so got a lot of that how did you going miss for me your fantasy draft i just, just busy forgot just busy and completely forgot about my draft it's the first time it's ever happened to me and uh it was like 9 30 at night and i'm like gosh darn it i'm <laughs> i completely missed it and honestly my team isn't that bad somehow the universe still knew that i would want daniel jones and graham gano on my team made that happen for me so i'm not i'm not too shook up about it was I won this league last year, so even if I lose it all, I'm still in the green. I won this league multiple times, so I could probably lose a few years in a row and still technically be in the green. But not not off to a, a great start, but we'll the, see uh, what the happens. The championship is won on the waivers, you know? So you, if you miss the draft, you can, you can, you can redeem yourself. On, if everybody, if only a couple people are working the waivers, I'm willing to bet that, that they're going to be in contention to win their league at least people who yeah. don't work waivers because they don't want to or whatever they're just throwing it away in my opinion and then sunday night giants i you know kevin was talking last week what was that was that sunday that we recorded last sure maybe yeah whenever lsu was was playing fsu and he's yeah, like sunday. man i forgot what it was like to wake up and have like real stress about a game and not that the expectations for the Giants are super high, but right out of the gate, prime time at home versus the Cowboys. I'm just, I'm nervous. I'm already nervous because it's well, just. You, you guys had a whole, good year last year. We did, so, but when the whole course. Daniel Jones does not have a, a great record on on prime time. I don't know that he's ever won a prime time game in his four years with the Giants. Now this is the like best Giants team. Well, anyways, <laughs> but this is like this is gonna. The season's going to go in one of two directions, like right off of uh, of the rip here. So I'm really, uh, really nervous about that. But looking forward to, to football being back. 
And uh, yeah, this is uh, this is like my my flu game tonight, Luke. As we're recording this, had the old couple of wisdom teeth pulled. So if I look a little funny or or sound a little funny, that is why I'm not in an incredible amount of pain. Luckily, my dentist is amazing. Shout out to Doctor Z, a little road dental care. Shout out Doctor Z, Doctor Z, my guy. If you're in the area. If you're in good old Newport Richie, you need some dental work. Go ahead and hit up Doctor Z. Tell him your boy sent uh sent you but yeah you know just uh got some stitches in my mouth doesn't feel great but we play the game anyways we get out there and we we do what we gotta do right there baby just ball out all right um so we're gonna talk more about the feeble world cup in a little bit but coming up on friday believe at 8 40 pretty sure it's 8 40 yeah. Team USA is going up against Germany. So Paolo Caro is going up against Franz and Mo Wagner in the FIBA World Cup semifinal because we talked a couple episodes ago about the fact that the U.S. could not beat Lithuania. And because of that, now instead of getting a Germany-USA final, we're getting the matchup in the semifinal. But we're going to be broadcasting on playback. Again, that's 8.40 Friday morning. So if you're a real Magic fan, you're a real one. You're going to be watching this game. Make sure you come in and hang out with us on playback. Always a lot of fun, and this really should be a great matchup. We'll talk more about it in a little bit, but it's going to be a, a great game. If you haven't watched any of the FIBA World Cup yet, you want to watch this game. And one more announcement. So uh, last year we did a group night uh, for the last preseason game at home against the Cleveland Cavaliers. And I want to say we had like 40-something people come out to a preseason game, which was phenomenal. I was blown away by the turnout that we had. And we've been talking about we want to do something big this year for the regular season. So we have circled February 13th at home against the Oklahoma City Thunder. That is a Tuesday night, and that game is going to be broadcast on TNT. So we're working with our, our, our friend John McCall over at the Orlando Magic. And he's helping us set up a group night. I think we're going to have close to 100 tickets reserved. They're going to be lower bowl tickets. They're going to be great pricing. Going to be very, very affordable. We expect these to go pretty quickly. So we're hoping in the next week or you know, couple of weeks here, we can start posting that link so you all can go and, and grab your tickets. But it's going to be somewhat closer to the OKC bench so we can make a lot of noise and, and hopefully... You know, ruffle a few feathers over there. We've always been talking about doing like a supporter section, and I feel like a supporter section is most effective near the opposing team's bench. And obviously, this is a TNT game. We want Magic fans to show out. So, if you want to help represent Magic fans to the entire country, to the entire world, we want you to be a part of this group night with us. So, be on the lookout. Like I said, the next couple of weeks, Luke, we'll go ahead and post that link out. And it's going to be a lot of fun. I legitimately cannot wait for this game. And it is, it, like you said, it's it's February 13th, correct? Correct. So listen, guys, I know what you're thinking. All right. You might be thinking February 13th. That's pretty close to Valentine's Day. Here's what you do. You just take the, you take the wife, you take the girlfriend, you take the significant other out. And you come out to the six-man show magic tnt game against okc on february 13th a day early go somewhere nice for dinner before and then come to amway what a great date at least in my opinion you know maybe the significant other wouldn't agree but you can make it out february 13th we'll see you guys there i i am very pumped for this like you said tnt game we want to show out i'm taking carmen out the friday before i'm trying Mm. to be smart about it so we can you know kind of have both because she was like Oh, you know, that'll be kind of like our Valentine's Day. I'm like, no, no. Like, we got a, you know, we got a little t- Italian restaurant that we always go to. Again, if you're in the Newport Richie area, you're looking for good Italian, hit up Tasso Italiano. Bon Jovi has been known to, uh, not frequent, but he was there once. It's good enough for Bon Jovi. <laughs> it's definitely good enough for you. So, yeah. Well, uh, just all the Newport Richie plugs tonight. You got a dentist oh, yeah. spot. You got the Italian uh, spot. Put Do on you ever have a dentist city. appointment there? Go there for dinner to this Italian spot right after. It's beautiful. And I live in Home Assassin now, so I'm driving an hour to this dentist. I'm driving an hour plus to the this Italian restaurant. So hey, listen, it's it, it's good stuff. Luke, you had the uh, you had the the Chick Fil A the pimento. 
mm. the, the honey pepper pimento sandwich. Yeah. But they uh they they gypped you on the old uh, jalapenos. The old jalapenos. They they didn't give them to me at all. Kevin, I sent a picture of it and Kevin was like, "Wait." Cuz Kevin for those of you don't know, Kevin zooms in on every picture and he tries to find something super obscure. So I know that he was zooming in trying to find these pickles. And he was like, there's no pickles on that sandwich. I mean peppers. Is there? Oh, pickles, peppers. I'm used to pickles, Chick-fil-A sandwiches. Pick a pickle pepper, no, no, pepper. No jalapenos yeah. on there. And I was like, yeah, there's not. It was very good. The honey that was on it was my favorite part. I'm a big honey guy. So you get me with the honey. I think I will put honey on every sandwich that I get from Chick-fil-A from here on out, regardless of if it's that one couple dollars extra i believe would i pay that every time over a spicy deluxe i don't know i don't know but it was very good i will say that the pimento cheese like really set it off Mm -hmm. just fantastic the 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 honey was great so i went like a week ago this time and got it and then we were in the neighborhood the wife hadn't had it she wanted to try it so we stopped and got it but we get to the the window and they're like sorry we're out of jalapenos so i'm like oh no this is what happened to luke <laughs> so i said don't bite that i drove to our nearest winn dixie and i went inside and i got the <laughs> jar of pickled jalapenos and <laughs> listen chick-fil-a's got quality ingredients jalapenos are are jalapenos you know what i mean that's so right. it was the the mount olive brand or whatever good enough for me that's hilarious but yeah it just takes it just takes it to another level you get a little bit more of that heat a little bit of that tanginess and yeah, always a good time. Mm. But again, folks, come to our group night to wrap all this back up. <laughs> probably won't be any honey pepper pimento sandwiches at Amway that night, but we'll be at Amway. And we might be even more delicious oh, than those sandwiches. So no, but off limits, you, you can't going. taste us. <laughs> you can't taste us. So um, <laughs> anyways, folks, uh, February 13th. Okay, see in Orlando versus the Magic on TNT, our uh, group night thing will will go out and it'll it'll be there. For anybody wondering, I'm not on any kind of narcotics, by the way. You are just the good old ibuprofen. So that's the last that I'll say about that. So Magic news, as Paolo, Franz, Mo Wagner are all moving into the FIBA World Cup semifinal. Joe Ingles in Australia, Gogo Batadze in Georgia have all been eliminated. And today we got some social media posts from the Magic that I know Joe Ingles was there. I don't know if we saw Goga. There was no Markel, no Gary Harris. A few other guys that we mentioned were missing. We didn't see J.I. But it seems like almost everybody else is back in Orlando starting what looks like like the voluntary workouts before training camp starts. Good to see those guys back in the gym. And, you know, this Sunday, the 10th, is going to be the FIBA World Cup Final. We will have a Magic player or maybe multiple Magic players in the FIBA World Cup Final. So after that, Luke, we have like two days, I'm sorry, two weeks and a day until Orlando Magic Media Day. So everything is, everybody's coming back into town. Everybody's getting ramped back up. And the season is almost here. It's been a very, very long off season. I feel like the first couple of months completely flew by relative to last season, but like the last month, really since FIBA World Cup friendly started, I thought it was going to fly by, but it is really dragged. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's because these games are like they're not magic games. You're looking forward to them, but you also know like there's a ton of them between now and the end. And I think that causes this to drag by. It's definitely felt that way for sure. It's not gone by quick at all. And that, and you know, at times like the basketball has has not been good. You know, we'll talk about this USA Italy game, complete blowout. Like it's great to see the U.S. get a win, but it wasn't super entertaining. And then even like Latvia and Germany, like sure, like Germany pulls out the win, but like watching Dennis Schroeder go, what was it like four of twenty six from the floor? was not really a, a super fun time. It was it was not a, a fantastic game to watch by any means. But again, everybody's back in town, getting ready for a uh, training camp in a couple of weeks here. Magic basketball is almost back, baby. I can't believe he shot the ball 26 times. I really can't. Well, he started like 0 of 9 or like 0 of 13. And I'm like, bro, like 
you're getting good looks at this point and they are just not going in like you do not have it we'll save that till till we talk about that game because i have a he had 28 attempts uh against the utah jazz in 2018 if you guys were wondering the last time that dennis schroeder chucked up close to 26 he had 28 field goal attempts in that game so that's that's a lot of how many of them did he make uh that's a great question honestly uh 28 field goal attempts against the jazz he had 41 he was uh he was kind of cooking a little he was 16 nowhere near 41 today he was it was not good it was it was all bad but we'll talk about that in a second i want to take a moment to give a special shout out to our wonderful patrons the folks that help make each and every episode possible if uh, you're unfamiliar with our patreon you can find us at patreon.com slash the six man show where for as little as two dollars a month you can help support the show and help us do what we love to do and hopefully the content that you like to consume or otherwise hey why the heck are you here right uh other than that though we have our all-star uh, hall of fame and elite tier of uh, benefits with patreon and the elite tier includes uh up to 35 percent off orlando magic home game tickets you know, regular home uh regular season home game tickets so if you like the show even a little bit, but you like the magic a lot and you want to save money going to their games, you can join our elite tier. And the way that that works is at the beginning of every month, we get the list of home games. We can share our special link with you all, and then you can go and buy those discounted magic tickets. So if that interests you at all, again, you can find us at patreon.com slash the six man show. And then we give our hall of fame and elite tier patrons a special shout out each episode. We'll go ahead and start by shouting out the Court Cousins, Drew Gooden, Armin Carson, Tulo, Jonathan Borges, Normal, Magic Player History, Gabe Gaines, Wiffle, Michael Martin, Jamel Miller, Michael Salapong, Donkey Punch, Dave, Paolo and Franz, Warren, Pierre A, Nostalgia, and M&Ms, Dylan Holden, Mr. Mikey, Eduardo Sanchez, Drum, Drum, Drummy, Drum, Drum, Danimal, Dodo 15, Bobby Skinner, PB in the mix, Goaty 93, Teddy Sylvia, Eric Lopez, Fuchsia, Juan Dorado, Bill Fulton, Edmund Lagone, Jose Esquilin, Death of Greatness, Caleb Pete, Cannibalism, Time, Mr. TV, ESPN Really Sucks, U95, Shred Jr., Bruce, Half Freak, and Shine, 177, Bulby, The Dawn, Himlo, Ben, Himro, Arm, Prop 221, Ray Pastrana, Magic Kid, 714, Spanking Season, Soft Taco, Victor Cologne, Irish Magic Mike, Austin Lampy, Random Hustle, Only Franz, Maria, Keith Walsh, Fritz, Currency, Kevin, Bruv, Sal. A big thanks to all of our Hall of Fame elite tier patrons, and of course, all of our patrons. We love you. You can find us at patreon.com slash the six man show. Okay, Luke, moving on to Tuesday. So the U.S. really struggled, you know, losing to Lithuania on Sunday. And some question marks for the USA heading into this game. Just, you know, how are they going to respond? You know, in, in terms of seeding, you know, Italy was probably the, the best matchup that the U.S. could have asked for in the quarterfinals. And obviously it, it brought back questions and, and criticisms of Paolo Bancaro's choice to join the U.S. national team over the Italian national team. In recent years, you know, Paolo has talked about his, uh, you know, uh, interest at least in playing for the Italian national team and just sort of like globalizing his brand. His great, great grandfather was an Italian citizen, as I understand it. So Paolo was able to, uh, you know, acquire Italian uh, citizenship that route and uh, would have been eligible to play for the Italian national team was in Italy earlier this summer. And there's, you know, conflicting reports about, you know, Paolo's communication with the Italian national team and, you know, their directors and head coaches and everything like that. Some people are saying that he blew them off. Some people, you know, there's been reports that he just said, Hey, not interested. I'm going to play for the U S whatever the case may be. So a reporter asked Paolo uh, the day before the game, just if he had it, any message for the Italian fans? And Paolo, very, uh, it was a very cordial, you know, m- mature answer. He just very, you know, said no, like nonchalantly, just no. I don't have anything to say to them. And uh, before the game, he received booze from the Italian fans that were in attendance. The Instagram comments, the the Twitter, you know, comments and everything like that from some of these Italian fans were just like really nasty. I, I'm. I don't think they represent like the majority of Italian basketball fans, but some of them were like really, really, really nasty before this game and during the game and after the game. I, so I had not seen 
the Instagram comments, things like that. Kevin sent something from basically the a Reddit. The Reddit page might have been the Orlando Magic subreddit, probably. And it was just listing these comments from these fans. I genuinely reading it couldn't believe it. I know there's like sick people out there. I get it. I know there's very sick Americans out there that would say and do say outlandish things to NBA players that they feel there's maybe a, a disconnect with because they're a player, not a person to them. But for Paolo, it seems like with like with these comments that the Italians that are commenting all this stuff, there is a personal thing there. Like it's not that he's just a basketball player. They want they they wish bad things for Paolo Bancaro because he chose to not play and represent Italy. And it's like at what point like did you did did we think that that was like appropriate to say or do or whatever it's it's a good example of like you know the way you act if everybody acted like you what would the world be like this it turned into that in the instagram comments it was everything right like left and right the the whole it looked like so much of it was just negativity from italians just flooding flooding the the, the all the social media feeds so i i couldn't believe it Super disgusting. I could not be happier that the Magic thumped him by 37. Or the Magic. The USA thumped him by 37. Excuse me. Who are more toxic? Italian fans mad at Paolo or I Filipino fans that are mad at the Magic for not playing Kai Soto in Summer League? It's close. That's It's close, but I'm going to give the edge to the Kai Soto fans. They really showed out in the worst way. So I, I would give it. They have the slight edge here. But had we had more time leading up to that, like the Kai Soto thing, it was just DMP after DMP, basically. And then, like, you know, when people started, you know, players started, whatever. Again, not Kai Soto's fault. Very unfortunate. But the fans, yeah, they they just, if we would have had that much time with the Italians, I think it would have just been as crazy the whole time. I think just in terms of sheer volume, you would give it to, you know, the Philippines. Yeah. But, like... In terms of like nastiness and vitriol, it's oh. like there are comments like, you know, I hope you ha- get cancer and die. Like, yeah. kind of, it's like crazy stuff to say. It was wild. Like, like they, the it, Philippine, it was wild. Filipino fans were like just calling Dylan Murphy like baldy. Right. You know? Like, which <laughs> right. is still, still hurts. You know what I mean? Like, as a balding man myself, <laughs> I mean, at least he went all the way with it. I'm still trying to hold on to what I got. But it, just not definitely not a nice thing to say, but it's different yeah, levels. Italian but like fans. you said, yeah, the the, the yeah. Kai Soto fans just in greater number, I would say, yeah, for sure. Well, the U.S. definitely responded, uh, had their their best, most complete game of the tournament, in my opinion. You know, Italy should be really proud of their team. You know that they made it all the way to the quarterfinals. A lot of people you know picked them to not even make it out of their group. Lo and behold, they did. Um, but really like the first couple of minutes of this game were close. Most like, you know, most basketball games are, uh, but by the end of the first and especially into the second and third quarters, like the majority of the second and third quarters, the U S ha- doubled up the, the, you know, Italy's team. Like it was, you know, like 38 to, you know, 74, whatever it was at some point, like they were just like really running away with this game. Not a lot to like dissect. You know, Mikhail Bridges was awesome, led all scorers with 24 points, eight of 11 from the floor, four of six from behind the arc, added seven rebounds. Tyrese Halliburton continued to be really good, 18 points, four rebounds, five assists, three steals, and a block. Our boy Paolo Bancaro, who seems to be a little bit bothered by the, uh, by the thumb injury, uh, just doesn't look quite as sure of, his, of himself, but. In almost 25 minutes, eight points, five rebounds, two assists, two steals, and a block. Jaron Jackson Jr. only played 10 minutes in this game. Got into to foul trouble early on, and Paolo Bancaro subbed in. And then just really this game was m- out of hand is putting it lightly for the majority of this game. There was n- no real need to bring him back into the game, Luke. But it was just good to see the U.S. respond get a big win, punch their ticket to the semifinal. But I don't think that this removes some of the questions that we still have about this team. Now, as we look at like Germany, like Germany has, you know, some size, 
they don't have a, a guy that might be as big as like a you know Jonas Valanciunas or or a guy like you know Nikola Vucevic, guys that they had troubles with in in, in previous rounds. But still have Voitman and and um, you know Tiemann and Daniel Tice and Franz and Mo Wagner. Like they still have Germany still has guys with a, a good amount of size. Before we start talking about the the semifinal matchup, let's talk about Germany. I apologize because I'm getting all all over the place here. So the U.S. again wins 100 to 63, just a, a blowout, Luke. And then Germany this morning, uh, Franz Wagner back after missing four games with a, a pretty significant ankle sprain, it seemed like he came off the bench. Uh, Germany continued to start. Uh, Dennis Schroeder, Andreas Obst, Isaac Bonga, Johannes uh, Voitman, and Daniel Tice. And then Franz came off the bench to give them a little bit of a, a scoring punch. Latvia, man. Uh, Davis Bertans and I'm going to butcher this other guy, Arturs Zagers. Those guys were shooting the absolute crap out of the basketball, especially Bertans in the first half. It was really Zagers in the second half making plays for Latvia. But Latvia, with their shooting, just really gave Germany everything they could handle. Dennis Schroeder struggled mightily. We talked about this a, a few minutes ago, but 4 of 26 from the floor. 4 of 18 from uh, from 2, 0 of 8 from the three-point line, 4 assists, 4 personal fouls, 4 turnovers. Just Dennis Schroeder called it the worst game of his career. Like He was absolutely terrible. Germany started to give Franz the ball in the second half. I think they started the third on like an 8 to nothing run, had like a 10 or 11 point lead. Latvia kind of fights back. They start going back to like the Dennis Schroeder-led offense and Latvia just sort of like, sh- like, you know, slowly but surely whittled the lead away, and then this got to be a super close game in the the final seconds here. Dennis Schroeder has a runner, you know, with a few seconds left to make it a a four point lead. It would have been at that point. Latvia gets the rebound. Bertans throws up like a thirty foot prayer at the buzzer, no good. And when you talk about a team like surviving a game. This is the epitome of that. Like Germany survived Latvia. Like Latvia sort of just ran out of time in this one. I would love to know. I, I genuinely I hate to dwell on Dennis Schroeder's performance, but it was really that the storyline of this, I would think. The fact that they were able to still win this game against Latvia despite the four of twenty six, fifteen percent from the field is what that comes out to. O of eight from the three point line. I would love to know the last time someone in an in international play had twenty six shots and didn't eclipse 10 points didn't get double digits truly to uh, probably a miracle that germany walks away with this one very fortunate that that was the case you like you said you get great outputs from moritz going three for three from the field and uh and franz going five of eight from the field 16 points for him 12 points for moritz i i genuinely can't believe that they still pulled that game out um, and it's all I've been thinking since that game happened about this game in general. And that's really the, the only input that is even worth really talking about is, is how Germany was able to even win that game with Dennis Schroeder being shooting as poorly as he did that uh, really absurd. And again, you know, it, it was just really that Latvia ran out of time. Like if they even had, you know, a few more seconds on the clock and, and Davis Bertans didn't have to try to go the length of the floor. He had a you know probably another two or three seconds. He probably could have made another you know two or three dribbles and maybe got off a better shot. But the shot that he took was a shot that basically he was making the entire game. Like Dallas Bertans, I know he's you know sort of average in the NBA, always been a great shooter. But in this tournament, in this game especially, like him and Arthur Zagers, just really on fire. Like Zagers is a guy that. Going into this tournament, I was not familiar with at all. I, I, I'm sure there's a lot of people that weren't, but the kid had the game of his life today, especially in the fourth quarter, was just making big play after big play. Bertans went a little bit cold there in the fourth, and Zagers was really putting Latvia on his back, almost brought them all the way back. But I think the concern that I have for Germany, and I know it was Franz's first game back. You know, after injury and probably trying to ease him back in, but I just don't know how many games we have to watch. Whether it's 
you know, Franz versus Greece last year, or, you know, Franz in, in this game in that third quarter, when the offense and, and even in the, the friendlies that we saw earlier this summer, when Franz is the one that this team is running the offense through, it just seems to flow so much better. I know Dennis Schroeder is, you know, captain of this team and has meant so much to this German national team and was awesome last year in the Euro Cup uh, semifinal when Franz really wasn't that great in that semifinal last year. But this team now and moving forward, I really do believe this, they're going to go as Franz does. Dennis Schroeder is, you know, it, you know, what, 30 years old now? He's into his 30s. Franz is, you know, what, 22, 23 years old. Just, like, really starting to come into his own. Down the stretch of this game, I don't understand how Gordon Herbert, the head coach for Germany, was watching Schroeder. And, and this is the thing that sucks, is Schroeder was getting good looks. It, it wasn't like he was taking a ton of bad shots. Like, most of his looks were good, but, like, some nights... You just, you ain't got it. And Dennis Schroeder definitely did not have it against Latvia. And Gordon Herbert, I know he had like a little bit of a, it, it made, you know, the rounds on social media, it went a little bit viral. Uh, Germany uh, in, in their last game, early on in the game, Herbert like kind of grabs Schroeder and like tells him to sit down. And Schroeder's like, bro, like, don't touch me like that. And understandably so, like, it's all, you know, grown men, no need to put your hands on anybody. But like it's almost like Gordon Herbert was like afraid to take the ball out of Schroeder's hands and give it to Franz. And it's either that or it's just like pure negligence. Like a guy that is not watching this team and is not watching these games because the best version of Germany's offense is when Franz Wagner has the ball in his hands. Whether he's the one taking shots or he's the one setting up other guys and he's the ones he's the one making decisions especially against USA, like Schroeder needs to have an all-time bounce back game because if he's anywhere near as bad as he was in this one and Germany is just so afraid to go away from Schroeder's ball handling and let Franz facilitate the offense, Germany will absolutely lose to the US. And it yeah, would suck I, because Germany really has a, a real chance to win this entire tournament. From this game, Jonathan, there's a... a couple things that I loved about it from this game and one of them being both of them being involving press conferences. Morris Wagner asked by reporters what do you think about your, your brother's performance? And he goes on to basically just say like there's two sides of this. There's me as a brother. There's me as a, as a teammate. And he said he's he put a boils down to his Franz is really effing good. And that was just fun. I mean, we love we're magic fans. We love the magic content. We love the the sibling, um, you know, not really camaraderie, but chemistry rather. And so that was cool to hear Moritz get to talk about his brother. It's always fun to hear. And then Franz Wagner and his press conference reporter says, basically, how did you feel like you did today? And he goes, what did he say, Jonathan? He said, uh, he said, how do you think I looked? Or something Riz, to that effect. Riz King, baby. Yeah. How do you how do you think I looked? And um, yeah. How did you think I looked? That was the quote, and I love that so much from Franz. I I think that that's the confidence that you need in a guy that you expect to be a one or two option on your team. Super fun getting to do this for USA and Germany, then matching up. And then you kind of look ahead at that point after that game, right? You look ahead of basically Canada seems inevitable. And so that will be what? Super disrespectful to Serbia. Well, Bogdan Bogdanovic has been absolutely balling. Yes, but unfortunately, to FIBA RJ Barrett and, and FIBA SGA, SGA himself is just a thing. SGA is a, a stud. And you know, you look at the last game that they even played against Slovenia, where you have RJ and, and Shea essentially combining for 55, just backpacking Canada through this game. You have Luca, Dylan Brooks getting ejected. Super fun uh, as far as what we saw and, you know, those who caught it, but those who just caught it on social media, we saw Dylan Brooks back in the hallway with his boxing gloves 
waiting for his team to come back, basically. That guy's kind of a clown, but very much is. Kind of, yeah. But yeah, I think Canada seems inevitable, and that's what, you know, USA Germany is a great game, but those guys have to look ahead to that as well. I hope they don't get caught looking ahead. I don't think they will because Germany is a very good team. I, they're well respected, and it's going to be a lot of fun to see how that one shakes out and who's going to end up playing in that final. Yeah, Canada definitely should be the favorite in the game. I haven't looked at the the lines by any means, but Canada minus five. Yeah, but again, you know, Bogdan Bogdanovic has been playing great. Nikola Jovic has been playing great. Uh, Serbia lost a uh, Borisa Samanic to uh, caught an elbow to the mm-hmm. like left flank against South Sudan and caused a bad enough injury where he lost his kidney. He had to go into surgery and have his kidney removed. So they're sort of like rallying around him. You know, they have like that emotional extra bit of motivation to, to play for their, their teammate who obviously is going to miss the rest of the, the world cup. But yeah, Canada definitely should be the favorite. And then to me in the final, like the favorite should be whoever comes out of, you know, USA and Germany. What, what is the line right now for USA and Germany? Do you happen to have uh, that? Yeah, USA is minus ten. Minus ten. I don't know. I kind of, I kind of like. Uh, obviously, yeah, I like the US to to win, but I, I kind of like Germany uh, against the the spread there. But it's yeah. gonna, it's gonna be a a good matchup. Obviously, the US has you know more talent than any of these teams. Like we don't even really need to go into specific matchups. But for me, what it's going to come down to is for Germany. What guys continue to step up? You know, Franz has missed four games, and in each of those four games, somebody has has stepped up and and sort of played above and and beyond the expectation. Like whether it's Schroeder, whether it's uh, Johannes Thiemann, who has been really good off the bench for Germany in the World Cup, whether it's Mo Wagner, whether it's you know Mauro Lowe or Andreas Obst, they've had just guy after guy after guy step up during this tournament. Dennis Schroeder is going to have to play to you know his ability in the way that we know that he's capable. Franz Wagner is going to have to have a, a fantastic game. Like he's going to have to have a game like he did against Greece last year, you know, where he's taking over and, and making big shots. And then everybody else just needs to step up and and just you know, play to the level that they're capable of. Mo Wagner, Daniel Tice, Mauro Lowe coming in off the bench. Uh, maybe we see some, you know, Isaac Bonga in this game to to try to match the the size and the you know the physicality of the U.S. Who knows? But I don't know who I'm rooting for in this game. Like, because I like Team USA. Like, if if there were no magic players involved, it would be much different for me. Because so many of these guys we watch on a nightly basis throughout the year, and you know we cover them year round. It's it's a it's a bit harder, you know, in my opinion. Team USA winning would be awesome. Like Paolo Bancaro, you know, chance to play for a gold medal would be awesome. Franz Wagner, Mo Wagner playing for a gold medal would be awesome. And if Germany pulls it off, I've still got them plus twenty five hundred. You know, turning twenty bucks into five hundred if Germany is able to come away with the whole thing. So I have like my own personal. I got I, kids got to eat. I got bills to pay. <laughs> so I won't be. I really won't be all that mad. But. If it is Serbia, if it is Canada, they're going to have a really good team, U.S. or Germany, whoever makes it to the final, they're going to have a really good team to beat in the final to go home with the gold medal. Listen, man, $500 is $500, all right? Well, I guess it's not even a, a medal in this. It's an actual cup, and then there's like second place and third place, but I digress. $500, $500, where I'm getting at here is USA, Germany, you're telling me you won't be rooting for Germany? Because if I had a five hundred dollar payout coming off of a twenty dollar risk bet, I'd be I'd have the, the the German flag would be in the mail on the way to my house, so I could wave the, the, the big one too, so I could wave it around. I'd be wearing my jersey. I'm I'd be a big German. I'm gonna be I'll be a big Germany fan for you this weekend. I I'm honestly good. Like it'll like it's twenty dollars that I've actually have invested, so yeah, I'm not all the, that worried the about payout, it. Payout, you know. The return would be sick, but I you will not find me shedding tears over Paolo Bancaro winning a World Cup for Team USA. I'll be I'll be ecstatic. Now, if Germany loses and then the U.S. loses in the finals, I'll be pissed. 
<laughs> then I'll be mad. But if one of our guys, if we're at media day being like, hey, how was it to win a World Cup you know, for your country? If that's a question that we get to ask, whether it's Paolo or Mo and Franz, I'll be good with that. And I'll yeah. be like, hey, thanks. You guys want me 500 bucks if it's the, you know, the Vogue. That's right. Yeah. All right. Looking forward to that. So again, uh, Friday at 840, we'll be on playback, playback.tv slash six man show. Come and hang out. Watch USA versus Germany with us. And then on Sunday, I don't know that we're going to be able to do a, a playback. You know, Kevin, you know, works. You and I will, you know, be at church most likely. I gotta, I gotta try to figure out how I'm gonna, I'm gonna watch that game Sunday when I'm supposed to be at church. So I, <laughs> Jesus, forgive me preemptively. I don't, I don't know how we're gonna work that out, but yeah, looking forward to the rest of the FIBA World Cup here. And then when that's over, got two weeks and in, in one day before Magic Media Day, folks. So I don't know what preseason rituals you all have, but but get ready because the, the season is coming. You know, in in just about uh. Two and a half weeks here. Yep. We'll be into it. Well, three weeks, whatever. Something like that. All right, Luke, I think that's going to do it for this one. Yeah. All right, folks. That is going to do us. You heard the man for Luke Sylvia. This has been Jonathan Osborne. You all have been listening to The Six Man Show, and we will catch you guys next time. See ya. Thanks for listening to The Sixth Man Show. Be sure to subscribe on iTunes and Spotify to get new episodes downloaded directly to your phone. If you enjoyed the show, please take a minute to give us a five-star rating and a review. It helps out the show a lot. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Six Man Show. We'll catch you guys next time. Go Magic!